straight into the message of God from Matthew chapter 18. All the time we are hearing the parables of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the Lord Jesus spoke the parables so that the people can have a clear understanding. You know, clear understanding of the word that he is speaking. The explanation that he is giving. Parables are nothing else but the stories. But stories are a normal word of the world. So therefore it is called parables. It's a divine word. And this divine word of parables of Jesus Christ of Nazareth gives every man an understanding. The Bible clearly says Jesus used the parables so that the hearts of the listener and the mind of the listener shall be attentive to his word and they shall learn something from the parable. So also the disciples, those who are with him, they shall also understand what about the parable that he is speaking. What is the reason that he is speaking this parable? What is the purpose of speaking of these parables? Every parable had one connection. Teachings of righteousness. Teachings of obedience. Teaching of the word of God. And finally connected to the kingdom of God. That every man who is a listener of the word of God, every woman who is a listener of Christ's word, shall enter into the kingdom of God, never be perished. Having those things in your mind, you also should be able to say, Lord, whenever I hear your parable, I shall be blessed. I shall have my soul saved well. I shall hear your voice very well and I shall be blessed. Here is another parable of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is also centered into the kingdom of, uh, this is also centered connection to the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. And whenever Jesus spoke, he connected very easily so that everyone shall be able to understand. And they, will, they were saying like that, isn't he speaking about heaven? Isn't he talking about the heavenly place? Isn't he talking about the kingdom of heaven? All these words, the people, those who heard, were speaking about. And here is Jesus Christ of Nazareth coming up with another, another message or another parable. Which parable is connected to our day-to-day -day life? What is that day-to-day -day life? Our day-to-day -day life is normal. Day-to-day -day life, worldly. Day-to-day -day life, less godly, more worldly. Day-to-day -day life, sometimes like me or us, have sinful thoughts, sinful ways, sinful words. So also, the way of our living is supposed far away from God. And sometimes we know God has blessed us, but we don't utilize that blessings. This is another important thing. God has blessed us, we don't utilize those blessings or keep those blessings. Righteousness, holiness, salvation, born again experience, reading the word, power of God, anointing of God, we don't keep those things. We take it lightly and we forget about all these gifts that God has given unto us. Therefore, God is reminding us through His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, commonly called a parable of an unmerciful servant. Matthew chapter 18. Tonight, uh, God is going to help us to the scriptures to be read by Lawrence and let him be anointed by the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 onwards, we are going to see. But tonight, two verses I'm going to read. The message of the parable is given in the beginning itself. Very importantly, understand, we are also servants. I am also servant, working under heaven. Okay? But I am also servant, working under the authority of the church. I am also servant, working under the superiors of the church. I am also servant, doing the will of God the Father, according to the authority that God has placed over me. So also, you may be a businessman, you may be becoming businessman. You may be a, a person who is working with a good job, Maybe going to obtain a very good job. Maybe you have a business. Maybe you have a, uh, what do you call, job. Maybe you have a job with authority. Maybe you have a job with a normal sense. Job with authority can be manager, can be general manager, can be supervisor, can be overseer, whatsoever it may be. Even sometimes secretary, you know, though she or he becomes a normal secretary, but they oversee all the stuff, what they are doing, where they are going, what they are coming, when they are going, what time they are coming, all that. At the similar way, God is speaking to you and speaking to me, telling us about this message of the parable. What is the message of this parable that Jesus spoke about the unmerciful servant in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35? Verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And how I can I forgive him? Whenever Jesus was speaking, and moving around here and there, 12 disciples were all the time with him. 
And so also publican, Sadducees and Pharisees, when he was in town, in Galilee, in Jerusalem, in all those places, and they were watching him, what type of messages he's giving, what type of miracles he's doing. Sometimes they used to watch when he's doing the miracle. Oh, Sabbath day, Sunday he's supposed to go and take rest. All the people are not supposed to do anything. Only go to the church from morning till evening, praise God, worship God, not doing any type of work. Not doing any type of work. So they shall not do any work. How come Jesus is casting out demons, healing the sick, laying hands upon the leper? Anybody, those who are coming by, he is immediately laying hands and praying for them. He is doing the miracle. It's the wrong thing. They were watching over him. And the Bible clearly says, during all this time, there was a rage, anger, between Sadducees, Pharisees, Jewish people, with Jesus Christ, our Lord. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth was teaching always all the disciples, those who were with him, and the multitudes, those who were with him, to continuously have look unto the word of God and build your life. During that time, Peter came. Why Peter came and asked this question to Jesus Christ, our Lord? Peter said, I have heard Pharisees talking about forgiveness. Peter came, Peter came and told Jesus Christ, I'm not in Jesus, I am from the same place. I am from Nazareth. I am from Jerusalem. I am from Judea. I am from Samaria. I walked all around these places. I went to the church of Pharisees and I have heard them saying, what did I hear? Jesus, do you want to know what I heard? They said that only three times you can forgive others. After three times forgiving others, you need not to forgive them. Peter is telling Jesus Christ of Nazareth, verse 21 again, and questioning Jesus Christ. What did he question? Let us hear it again. And now here he comes. The Bible clearly says, Peter questioned about forgiving your own brother. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. The Bible clearly says, the Jewish and the rabbis, Jewish and the rabbis, and also Pharisees, they had taught the people in synagogue churches, three times you have to forgive. But Peter came and told Jesus Christ, how shall I forgive my brother seven times? He heard about seven times also. And Jesus initially said, what did he say? One has to forgive his brother, how many times? 70 times, not seven times, but 70 times. So 70 into seven, you can calculate how much is it? 490 times, correct? Huh? Like that. So the Lord Jesus told him, keep on forgiving. You cannot count seven times, seven times. No, you keep on forgiving like that. And when he said like that, Peter was surprised. He was astonished. But Jesus was explaining him with the parable so that he shall be able to understand. And the parable begins here so that Peter can understand. All of the 11 disciples understand. And because of Peter, the people, those who are hearing the word of God from Sadducees, from Pharisees, from synagogue churches, they should also be able to understand. My brothers, my sister, one important thing you should be able to understand. Whoever holds the Bible, whoever holds the Bible, goes around the Bible, or whoever becomes pastor, or according to the fivefold, disciple, prophet, evangelist, prophet, sorry, pastor, and evangelist. One more time. Disciple or apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Whoever becomes like that. In between this, deacons, in between pastor and teacher, deacons, ushers, elders, all those are coming. Between evangelists and preachers, or evangelist and prophet, there are priests. There are priests. And those are elders of the church, those are working. Named by the Pharisees and Sadducees and also religious practices. Then after apostle also comes ministers. So all those are filled in the gaps in between, but the major are fine. In this also, Jesus started explaining to them that what exactly a man should be able to do it. Remember, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 23, he said, the king had a servant. A king had a servant. And therefore, whoever is like this servant of God, under this fold ministries, so also when you are a servant, God is asking you to be faithful. God is asking you into the world also, wherever you are working, you should be faithful. But those who are working for God, they should be more higher faithful 
then what is the expectation of man and woman or authority but of God? And the Bible clearly says, therefore Jesus was teaching them. Why he was teaching them? Because many people do not understand the real servanthood. They feel that if they are apostles, they can do anything. Ministers, they can do anything. Prophet, they can speak according to their own mind. Evangelists, they can preach according to their taste. So also pastors, they can control the congregation. Teachers, they can only teach according to denomination. These are the things happening. But you shall be able to understand, if God has placed you under any of these authorities, you should be under the authority of God as a servant, as a totally dedicated to the Lord and the Lord's work. This parable Jesus explained because they should be able to understand. They were not knowing what is the meaning of forgiveness. What is the meaning of remaining forgiven and forgotten? Matthew chapter 18, verse 23, 24, and 25, and 26. Come on. Matthew chapter 23, 18, 23, and 24. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. Remember, Jesus Christ of Nadith is connecting his parable and started the parable. In the beginning of the parable, Jesus said, Please. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king. Therefore, kingdom of heaven is like a certain king on the earth. A king is holding his kingdom. A king is holding his territory. King is holding his area. That is given unto him by God. Similar way, there is a kingdom that is held by God which would take account of his servant. As the local kings, they have so many servants, but he has an account of every servant. So also, the Bible clearly says, there is a kingdom of heaven, and in the kingdom of heaven, there is a king who is taking account of every man and every woman. And the Bible says, upon every servant, those who are working under heaven, and under the, therefore I declared unto you about the fivefold ministry, in between the fivefold ministry, what are the other, you know, boxes and other offices that one should be able to understand. How they became deacon, how they became usher, how they became elder, how they became minister, how they became disciples, how they became, you know, you know elders. And so many other things are there, living about the fivefold ministry. Coming back to the word of God, verse 24. One was born unto him, which owed his ten thousand talents. Yes, go ahead. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. Correct. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. And verse 28, uh, 27. The word of the Lord clearly says, the king looked into his own servant because the king had given a lot of money. If you read this chapter, the word of God clearly says, in those days also, Denarius was working. And the king had given denials to this servant of God. So it means he had given a big amount. When the amount was given, it was a big amount. And he was not able to repay the king. And the king asked him, if you, have to not, if you are not able to pay though you are working, Keep your wife and keep your, it means let your wife also work, children also work, so that they can be paid. All the debts can be paid. That's what the king put a decree against him. And after that, the Bible clearly says, when he started pleading unto the king, the servant started pleading unto his own king, and the king forgave for all the debts or whatever the money he had taken and given him a chance of freedom. But this servant, when he received the freedom from God Almighty, what he does? This servant who was working for a king, who was a debtor to a lot of money, when he received the debt free, or when he received the forgiveness of all the money that he need not to pay, what he has done is very potent. And that teaches us a very potent lesson which Jesus wants to put before you and put before us. From 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 18, verse 28 to 30. Then the servant refuses Okay, go ahead. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. Now look unto this servant. He was working with the king. Therefore he had money. And he also had some other side business, or some other business, secretly he was doing it. He went to his servant. 
And what did he say? Verse 28. He, went and called one of his he went out and called one of his fellow servants who was working with him. He had also taken some money from this man. What did he say? Okay. And he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat. He cut him and took him by the throat. Yes. Saying, pay me that thou owest. He cut his neck and he said, you must pay everything to me. The servant who received the forgiveness from his king, now he has another servant who is supposed to owe you, owe him. And he's catching his throat and asking him, saying, pay me that thou owest. All that you're owing me, you must pay me. The next word was 29 and 30, very importantly. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay the all. What the major servant, the main servant did with the king, he pleaded unto him to forgive him. To not to take his wife, not to take his children to work, not to take him also to work, but he will surely give. But he received the forgiveness. But here what is happening, the similar way the other servant of him is also pleading unto him, forgive me. I will pay for you. My children, my son, my daughter, we have a family. The Bible says, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, besought him, requesting him, pleading unto him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Wait a little while, give me some time and I will pay you all. But what he does, look at this word, and he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the but he did not have mercy upon him. That's why in today's parable, Jesus is speaking the parable's title with the title of unmerciful servant. Why did Jesus spoke this parable like that? I was thinking. And now you also must be thinking, why did Jesus speak this type of way with the parable and given us to? Because the king had mercy upon his servant. But this servant who had her servant who had taken her money, he did not have a mercy upon him. He was catching him with the throat, making him to pay. Because he did not pay, he said that give me some time, I will pay back. He did not listen, took him and put him in the prisons and gave him the trouble. And the Bible says, and he would not, he would not listen. He never accepted his forgiveness, never accepted his time, never accepted that to give him time or any type of mercy upon him. But went and cast him into the prison till he should pay every manner of penny. The word of the Lord clearly says the next words, which is very, very important, from verse 31 to 34. I have divided this, Matthew chapter 18, 21, 22. Then Matthew chapter 18, 23 to 27. Then Matthew chapter 18, 28 to 30. Now Matthew chapter 18, 31 to 34, the final message. The message is nothing else. The Bible clearly says, you must learn a lesson. I must learn a lesson. Because when Jesus was speaking about the servants, he was teaching the parable with the unmerciful servant. And he was telling the disciples, you should have mercy. You should not be unmerciful towards all. Now why he was teaching unmerciful, not to have, you know, not to be unmerciful? Why he was teaching to be forgiven? Why he was teaching to be forgetful? What is the reason? Because Jesus was telling them, uh, importantly, the real message of this unmerciful servant. And that's what you're going to see. It. It's very important for your life. It's very important for your life. Very important for my life too. Especially the people, those who are on positions. The people, those who owe money to give it to you. And when you become the you know, lender of the money, when you become a position man and woman, when you are in business position, when you are in the position to lead somebody else or give them feed of something what they ask you. To be frank with you, God is teaching a lesson for everyone, those who are in authority, how their life has to be. And not only that, those who are not in authority also, how their life has to be in day-to-day -day, day -day situation. That's what Jesus is teaching us. And this is nothing else but the final result. Upon every man and woman, to understand the teachings of God through Jesus Christ our Lord, that we should be merciful people. We should be forgiving people. We should not be unmerciful. We should not be unforgiven. Coming back to the word of God, the lesson from all this chapter is coming here now. Matthew chapter 18 and the next 31 to 34, correct? Yes. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, 
they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that thou hast, because thou deservest me. Now when the king heard about this servant, what he has done, he called him back. He said, I forgive you about everything. And how come you are not forgiving others? The next thing, the Bible says, verse 33. Shouldest, thou, shouldest not thou also have had compassion? I had a compassion upon you. Why you don't have a compassion with that man? I had a compassion upon you. Why you did not have compassion on thy fellow servant? Even as I had pity on thee. I had pity on thee. I had mercy on thee. I forgave you. I did not catch your son, daughter, wife to work for me, but I gave you all the freedom. I forgave you of anything. Would you not do the same thing to your other fellow servant? The Bible gives us the answer. Verse 34. And his Lord was God and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was given. Because he was in authority. Because he was king. He was able to take the revenge on him. This is not a revenge, but to teach him a lesson. The Bible says, and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. It means the Lord had put him into trouble that he shall confess and he shall repent and do everything clear from his debts. The debts are talking about the weaknesses that man and woman carry. The forgiveness is from God alone. The king of heaven is started the word of God, the kingdom of heaven. There was also, there is a king. So also in the world, there is a king who had a servant. The parable started with Jesus Christ of our Lord. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is comparing the earthly, earthly king to the kingdom of heaven's king. And both the subject is of forgiveness and forgetfulness. That one has to forgive and one has to forget whatever they have done. Sometimes I'm able to forgive people, but I'm not able to forget. Sometimes you are able to forgive people, but you're not able to forget. Sometimes it is possible like that, that you forgave, but still you remember, and you went on telling them. The forgiveness did not come from the bottom of your heart. It only came from your lips. If it would have come from the bottom of our hearts, we would have not repeated that. The Bible says, whatever is in your heart, it comes out of your mouth. So one has to realize that, and one has to understand that what Jesus is teaching us through this parable, that you and I should be forgiving people. And why it is important to forgive others? Why it is important to forget also? See, when you don't forget the things that the others have done, you will not have peace. You have forgiven. And because you have forgiven others, God has forgiven your sins. God has forgiven us your debtors. God has forgiven us the sins that is upon you. God has forgiven the wrong things that you have done. That is the debt of your life. You owe those debts to Jesus Christ our Lord. But yet God forgave you. But you are not able to forget. When you don't forget, remember you disturb your own life. You bring disaster to your own peace. You are alive, you are restless. You sleep, you think about the same. You get up and get up with the same thought. You walk and when you see that person, you are still boiling. When you have that person around, you still have the remark. You start putting the chart entirely. Why God is saying to you all this? Because God has some plan and some purpose for you and for me. That you shall live in peace. The Bible clearly says every time Jesus took the parables, he had one person for towards his disciples and towards the people, those who heard. Number one, they shall know the word of God. Number two, their salvation shall be firm. Their birth or born again experience shall be totally perfect. They shall carry the spirit of God in them. Hearing the word of God, they shall carry the spirit of God in them. Why? If they don't carry the spirit of God, they will not be able to forgive. No man will be able to forgive any man unless and until they carry the spirit of God. The spirit of God is nothing else but the Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God is teaching you everything and he helps you to forgive because with man it is impossible. With this flesh it is impossible. With this man, definitely not. With this mind, definitely not. With this heart, still not. Because though you forgive, but un, 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 unforgiveness still comes. Reminder still comes. She did like that. He did like that. How to get rid of this man? 
Oh, why he is coming again? Why is he standing here? Why this is done again? Why this is happening again? My brothers, my sister, something great that Jesus is teaching you tonight. So that he shall give you peace, shall give you joy, shall give you happiness, and you shall be walking freely, having no burden of any debts on your body. Remember your debts to whom? To Jesus Christ. Why? Because he paid your debts. You paid all the debts. He paid everything that yours. What he paid? Sorrows, pain, agony, sickness, sins. In sins, there are so many sins in my life. He paid everything. And he made me clear, get clear. Nothing is there on master. Nothing is there on the sons and daughters. Their debts I have paid, Jesus said. So when your debts are paid by him, who is that Satan? Who is that person who can come and tell you, accuse you? No doubt I called some of the sisters here and they said that God's servant spoke that justice is coming. Why the justice is coming? Because you had a heart of forgiveness. You bore all the pain and sorrows and agony. You underwent all manner of shame. You hid from the people that what they will question me about my family life. Every man and woman, including me, about this unmerciful servant. And therefore, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is teaching us from Matthew chapter 18, verse 35 onwards. Remember, hear it, and let us change our life. Ten more minutes. God is going to give us the wonderful word. Matthew chapter 18, 35. So likewise, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if be from your heart, forgive not everyone is better than trust us. So likewise, shall yes. my heavenly Father do also unto you, if be from your heart, forgive not everyone is better than trust us. Now Jesus is coming to the point. What is his point? His point is not money. If you read this chapter, this chapter actually I also read what is that penny, what is he talking about dollars, what is he talking about denarius. In those days, in the book of the Bible, it's mentioned denarius was used. If the denarius are used, now today denarius are what? What are, what are the dinars? Come on, brother businessman. Huh? Currency? Okay, highest currency, correct? Dinar has the highest value in the world. It pays highest dollars, highest currencies, dollars of Canadian dollars, US dollars, Australian dollars. Pays highest dollars, Indian rupees, more than Pakistan rupees, Bangladeshi rupees, or uh, Sri Lankan rupees, whatsoever it may be. Paying highest currency, dinars. And not only that, the second comes all the Middle East, some other currencies, then third comes the UK. That's euro, right? Euro currencies. Uh, pounds, yes. Sterling pounds. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> bankers are here, I forgot uh, to ask them. Retired bankers are there, a lot of saved, all currencies. All currencies. Retired bankers are there, those who have known all currencies, saved all currencies, little, little, little like this. It's wonderful to have it. And the Bible stated, uh, sorry, Jesus stated this parable to complete it here about this unmerciful servant, 1835. So, Heavenly Father also, come on. Likewise. So, I will also unto you, if we from your heart forgive not everyone is better than trespasses. His trespasses. We are so good. Her color shirt is like that, her pants is like that. And behind that, after that, her behavior is like that, his behavior is like that. We are ready to talk. Trespasses are nothing else but the sin. Trespasses are nothing else, the weaknesses of other person, which is against the law of God, not of this world. In this world, if you do anything against the law, they say, no, this is the law, we can do it, anything. Recently, God gave me a time to preach in some of the marriage, where I preached about, and the pastor after the service came and told me, you hit my heart today. I asked him why. He said, today you open the subject in regards to the rib. You open the subject in regards to the rib. That Adam, when he was slept by God the Father, when he put him to sleep, Adam slept. And God removed, the Bible says, one rib. And God covered it with the flesh. And God gave him back again as woman. And when Adam looked unto that flesh and bone, he said, bone out of my, flesh out of my, and she shall be called Eve. 
One Eve was given by God. So I touched the subject there. God brought Eve. God did not bring another man. God did not bring two Eves, but God brought one Eve. So this is what is the Christian marriage like that. God gave me little words to speak on that day. And he appreciated very well. And he said, on that day and night, he stepped down and he noted all those things to put it into the computer so that he can preach into some other marriage messages. It's wonderful. Something we have to learn. We have to give importance to the word of God. This is what I want to tell you. It's not the preaching. It is the importance to the word of God. We read the verses so many times. But one day God took out that importance, we never gave it. And therefore, Christians have to have one ribs marriage. Okay, coming back to the word of God, Bible also speaks about that Jesus was telling about that sins that the people talk about. No, he doesn't pray properly. No, he has this type of weaknesses. No, pastor is actually like that. Or there are so many other weaknesses. And this is the work of the evil. But at the same time, the Bible clearly says, so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. My heavenly father will do same thing to you, Jesus said. If you, from your hearts, forgive not everyone his brother. Why did he talk about brother? All are not brothers. But when you have become born again, when you accepted Jesus Christ and born again in the spirit and water, you become brothers and sisters forever. Your relationship in the kingdom of God. Many times the Bible says you must call the sisters, those who are in the spirit. You must call the brothers, those who are in the spirit. You must call the eldest father and the mother, if they are really elders. But the word of the Lord clearly says, so also you should be able to importantly know that they should be in the Lord. Then only. In the Lord, the relationship is forever. The Bible says, God, Jesus was saying that my heavenly father will not forgive them if you don't forgive their trespasses, your brother's trespasses. So whatever your brother has done against you, against whatever sister has done against sister, if you don't forgive them, God's heavenly father is not going to forgive you. The next word is very important. The next word says, 1835 is last, but there is one thing that the Lord is saying to you. One thing that the Lord is saying to you that if you don't forgive their trespasses. Now we know <clears throat> everybody has sinned. Everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. And everybody's sins are known unto you. So therefore today what we are going to make a decision. We are not going to bother others. We are not going to say anything to them. But we are going to forgive them. And when we forgive them, God will forgive you all your trespasses. This is what the Bible says. All your trespasses will be forgiven. Matthew chapter 18 Verse 23, we all are debtors to God. Please read that word. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. Mm. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. And now the brother, brothers and sisters, the Bible clearly says, God is telling you through Jesus Christ our Lord, you have to forgive others sins. Trespasses means sins. Trespasses means all manner of wrong things against the word of God. Not against one another, against the word of God. When you do wrong against the word of God, you do wrong against God, against Jesus Christ, against the Holy Spirit, and against one another. When this is happening, what the Lord is saying to you, you should be able to control and you should be able to forgive. Then how you are able to forgive? The Bible clearly says, sorry for that word that I missed it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. So therefore the Bible clearly says, this servant did not have that understanding to forgive the other servant that was working under him. And he has to undergo the punishment of the king. Remember the king kept him not to only keep the money back to give the money back or to pay the debts back but kept him for a long time in the prison so that he shall learn the lesson. And here God is teaching you and teaching me that you should have a developing character of forgiving others, forgiving others trespasses, forgiving others weaknesses. Their weaknesses may bring sin. Their trespasses may be known according to the word of God, sin. But yet you should be able to forgive. Now, another important thing is also there, whether we are able to walk according to the word of God in that manner 
that such trespasses, weaknesses, does not bring sin in my life and our lives. Coming back to the word of God, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Then be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Remember, God is saying, Paul is saying, of course, in the church of Ephesia. Paul is teacher of the word of God and written many epistles. Gospel is four, epistles are twelve, more. And Paul has written all this. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Paul says, And be a kind to one another. You know she has done wrong. She spoke wrong words. He has also spoken wrong words. He has hurt your heart. He has hurt your feelings. But yet the Bible says, Be a kind to one another. Then how tender-hearted, forgiving one another. You have to forgive. Some people have taken the money, not given, try to forgive. Now why I used try? Because it's impossible for a man. But then how man can forgive? That I'm coming to conclusion. So you shall have an understanding that you have the same ability what Christ has taught you. The Bible clearly says, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. How come God has forgiven you for Christ's sake? How come God has forgiven? God the Father, the King of Heaven has forgiven you because of Christ's sake. Because Christ stood between man and God. He stood it between God and man. Man is sinner. Man is fallen. Man is debtor. Man is liar. Man is adulterer. Man is a lawbreaker. Man is a stealer. Man is a thief. Man is a murderer. But he stood in between both of them. Between God and man. And what he took, he took all of that man on his head. He became murderer. He became sinner. He became liar. He became accuser. He became sinner. The Bible clearly says the sins of the entire world was upon Jesus. Because he became sin. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is and Jesus has to pay the penalty of death because of your sin and because of my sins. Therefore, you and I have to hear the word of Jesus. And what is that word Jesus is telling you? Forgive others. Forgive others. Jesus is saying that you must forgive others because I forgive you for all your sins. I stood in between. I made you free. And therefore, Father cannot punish you. God the Father cannot punish you. You have done wrong, but God the Father will not punish. You have done sin, God the Father will not punish. God the Father will not demand the money. God the Father will not demand why you have done like this. Why? Because Jesus stood in the middle and paid all the debts of your sin. Paid all the transgressions. Paid all the sins. He stood in between and paid the debts so that you are free from the punishment of God the Father. Breaking of the law is done. Breaking of the commandments is done. But when Jesus stood in between and said, I have taken his upon my head and I die for him, make him free. And therefore God the Father forgives you. So also Bible clearly says, so tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you and I. My brothers, my sister, the Bible clearly says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, I think, so I do not know, just try. Always focus on God's forgiveness when you have an enemy next to your house. Always focus on God's word when you have neighbor sitting as an enemy in your office. Always remember sometimes your own husband, own wife can be an enemy working wrong things. But the solution is come back to God the Father who has taught us to forgive every one of us. He is a forgiving God. Jesus said, be merciful and be tender-hearted and be kind. We shall become like that. Colossians chapter 3, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also you do the same. You have to do the same. And the Bible clearly says, allow yourself with one important thing which will help you. And that help will come through Gospel of St. John chapter 14 and through Gospel of St. John chapter 15. All the verses I will not speak, but I will explain to you what the Bible says when Jesus was on the earth. He said, you must have the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 verse 26. And Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit of God is come upon you, he will teach you all things. 
he will also bring it to your remembrance you may not remember you may go to shout at somebody you may go to fight at somebody you may try to use the bad words you may try to say something you may try to insult somebody but the holes of god will remind you but the comforter which is the holy ghost come on but the comforter, but the comforter which is the holy ghost the holy ghost whom the father will send whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things teaching by the holy spirit is better than the pastor he will teach you all things and perfectly then next one and bring all things to and bring all things to your remember what sometimes you may not remember you are so in a hurry somebody has crossed your car and we call so many other things to them sometimes somebody shows hand and the, we also get angry and we also show the hand he is showing one time you are showing two times you know that is happening in our lives right or not we are not remembering but the holy of god will remind you don't use bad words don't insult others don't condemn others don't talk any words that will hurt their hearts or feelings don't have any matter of things to do against anybody forgive everyone forget everyone forgive and forgive it's very very important they are like a coin you have to forgive from one side the other side also you have to be forgetful about those things because if you keep on remembering you will have a problems coming back to the word of the lord the bible clearly says therefore one has to be forgiving then the bible clearly says he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you i have said unto you so it's very very important the bible clearly says allow the lord's spirit to work in you allow the holy spirit of god to teach you allow the holy spirit of god's word to teach you allow the holy spirit of god to teach you what the holy spirit of god will teach you love god love one another what the holy spirit of god will teach you forgive one another forget about the thing the bible clearly says allow the lord's spirit to work in your life allow the holy spirit of god to teach you allow the holy spirit of god's word to teach you allow the holy spirit of god to teach you what the holy spirit of god will teach you love god love one another What the Holy Spirit God will teach you? Forgive one another. Forget about the wrong things also. Forget their trespasses. Forget their all the things that they have done against you. The Bible clearly says this example God has given unto us in books of the Bible in so many other places. But God says today you shall be able to understand the Holy Spirit God is very important. Without the Holy Spirit God I cannot forgive my enemy. Without the Holy Spirit God you cannot forgive your enemy. Ask the Holy Spirit God to become strong in you. And next week we are going to have the special blessings of god of a fasting and prayer and that prayer fasting is going to be revival of the holy spirit in your life and my life you will be revived with the holy spirit and power so that all things you are able to follow all the teachings you will be able to accept all the laws you will be able to accept all the commandments of god you will be able to accept and you will be able to do the things of god why because the whole of god will be revived and strengthened and be blessed he wants to pray with me or pray after me come on lift up your right hand Pray this prayer after me. Loving Father, Loving Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us. For teaching us the parable. The parable of unmerciful servant. Of unmerciful servant. We will be merciful. We will be merciful. We will be merciful. Kind. Kind. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Forgetful. Forgive of the things that they have done unto us. Of the things that they have done unto us. We will love you. We will love you. We will love one another. We will love one another. We will be holy. We will be holy. And righteous. And righteous. And waiting for the Holy Spirit of God to guide us. And waiting for the Holy Spirit of God. Fill us more with the Holy Spirit of God. Fill us all with the Holy Spirit of God. So that the Holy Spirit of God shall teach us. So that the Holy Spirit of God shall teach us. And bring us to remembrance. And bring us to remembrance. All that you have taught to the people. All that you have taught to the people. I want to learn. I want to learn. We want to learn. We want to learn. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit. Teach us the Word of God. Teach us the Word of God. Jesus Almighty name. Jesus Almighty name. We pray and ask. We pray. and shout amen. amen one more time amen, amen. one more time amen, amen.
God the Father and God the Holy Spirit shall give us that heart of forgiveness and we shall be able to lead a life with forgiveness to others. Thank you, Father, because we know when we forgive others, our sin shall be forgiven. forgiven. In Jesus' almighty name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Which in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, which in the name of Jesus, the Lord will bless you, the Lord will keep you, the Lord will make his face to shine upon you, the Lord will bless you.